News First News Line with Faraz Shaukatali. And a jolly good morning to you. This is News Line live as always from the News First studios in Dawson Street in Colombo. And this morning the country wakes up to the news that the uh, fuel distribution has been declared an essential service and uh, the troops went in in the early hours of the morning to go and take over and they were met with uh, <coughs> intense uh, opposition um, and uh, we are also joined this morning by Mr. Rusri Pala Tenekon, um, a, a well-known uh, activist and uh, a vociferous activist at that who has been going on in spite of legal um, challenges that have been put forward by. Very good morning to you, Mr. Rusipala. Good morning, Faraz. And um, let's, uh, let's join uh, our news first. Chaturanga is not... Uh, <clears throat> we will pay you some visuals just now the, uh, whilst the uh, control room get the act together. These are images, Mr. Spala, of um, the, uh, the troops going in there to take it over. What do you think? Stern action, necessary action, firm action? Yes, you know, I, this is not a scene that we would like to see anywhere. Because the trade union should have had the control for themselves, you know, without, so without allowing the government to take this step. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, uh, when somebody overplays or goes on the wrong track, yeah. the governments of the day will have to take certain actions. But it's unfortunate, but these things have to happen. And uh, we've now got um, Chaturanga Hapuarachi from News First, uh, who was there at the scene earlier. Uh, very good morning to you, uh, Chaturanga. Good morning to you, Farad. Uh, can, you, can you describe uh, the scenes at <laughs> Kolonava this early this morning? Yes, for us. We got to know very early this morning that the army uh, was to enter the Coronava oil refinery and uh, two <coughs> reporters from News First uh, went to the location and we were near the main entrance from the Coronava side. Uh, there are several entrances to this Coronava oil refinery, but we were near the main entrance and from uh, what we gathered at that moment, there were about 30 to 50 uh, workers inside the oil refinery uh, with the gates completely locked. They were inside uh, still on strike. There were about 20 police officers outside the gate with uh, asking permission or asking them to let the police in so that the police can establish the security in the uh, oil refinery. Mm -hmm. However, continuously the people inside did not let the police come in and after about half an hour uh, this is at about 2.30, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, the army came in, about 20 army officers stood in front of the gate and still requested permission to go into the oil refinery. Still, the protesters or the psych uh, or the employees of the uh, oil refinery in Kolonawa did not let anyone come in. Uh, they were uh, shouting out from inside the oil and refinery saying that, you know, this is the army and they shouldn't be doing things like this and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. But uh, later we found out that the army had actually entered the premises from the Obeseikarapura entrance, that is on the other side of the oil refinery. They had come through the oil refinery and they forced the employees uh, to open the gate and let the other people or the army personnel who are outside the gate also to come in. They very quickly in about one to two minutes they cleared all these uh, people who were inside they put them out and locked the gate uh, with the army inside mm -hmm. it now seems at that moment uh, there were several arguments going on the people tried to push the gate and they were hitting the gate uh, uh, unsuitable language spoken uh, there was a situation there at that moment mm -hmm. and right after that after the army went in and closed the doors, the people who were uh, protesting or engaged in the strike, they were seated outside until about 3, 3.30 in the morning. That's when we, uh, that's when I left the home, but we still have a reporter. Uh, right before uh, uh, the Satikata program uh, aired on our sister channel, Sirasa TV, we, I called one of them to find out what is going on there. 
uh, to uh, keep you all informed. But at the moment, as we speak, there is nothing, no development in terms of the people who were put out by the Sri Lanka army. But uh, if you take a look at the news alerts that have been coming in, <coughs> the Sri Lanka army has said that they are going to distribute the uh, oil starting from this morning with the use of uh, army drivers. And uh, the government information department has also asked uh, that the employees who are working at the oil refinery to report to work uh, uh, since this has been gazetted now as a uh, compulsory service, essential service rather. And uh, Chaturanga Haiparachi, thank you very much for updating us on that. So would you say that the situation there uh, was likely to, uh, was bordering or coming very close to uh, becoming a breach of the peace there? I'm sorry for that, I couldn't get the last bit you said. The, the, the situation uh, in Kolonava, was it yeah. as though there was likely to be a breach of the peace? No, no um, that, that would be an exaggeration for us because, see, uh, what happened, there was, there, the people there were obviously, uh, uh, you know, they were emotional and there was a bit of heat or tension there, but the army was very uh, organized, they came in in about one to two minutes, everything was done, there was no unnecessary uh, force used from the, from what we saw, the people also, in a way, uh, if I, if I may, understood that the army was carrying out their duty and did not really, you know, go to start or, you know, inst instigate anything at that moment. That's what I felt personally, but uh, uh, definitely open for debate. But uh, to the extent where the peace is hampered, no, I don't think so. Good. Um, wonderful. Thank you very much for that. Uh uh, enlightening report from Chaturanga Hapuarachi. Now then, uh, Mr. Rizipali Tenakon, uh, you, you're former trade unionist and so on. Uh, have the trade unions acted properly or not? For us, if you just look back to the history, there are many instances in the history where essential service orders have been uh, imposed and then uh, and then this type of thing has happened mm. and there also has been instances where the trade unions on trade union action strike have uh, defied the essential service orders and carried on with their work of course being ready to face the consequences but at the same time yeah. the government of the day has to ensure the services to the public um Mr. Spala, you know, from the visuals that we saw, yes, um, and, and you know, hats off to news, the team news first, yes, uh, for being on the ball and on on site, yes. Uh, but from those visuals uh, and the others that we've been seeing this morning, uh, the workers were drunk, or they appeared to be drunk, certainly, and th this, this <coughs> they put the whole of the installation at risk, and if you you know, it's highly inflammable material, and. Uh, they, they've been uh, rather flippant in, the, in their attitude uh, and their, their responsibility. And what would have happened if you know, things went out of hand and it went up in flames? Trade unions have a right to strike, but then they have no right to sabotage. And they don't certainly have a, any right to no. gamble with the security and no. the safety of uh, public property and the public. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. I have, we have resorted to trade union action, but we have never resorted to breaking the machines or, you know, disrupting the arrangements. We just walked out and stayed out. That is our right. Hmm. Of course, we have to face the consequences, you know. If the government wants to ensure the services to the public, it is the right of the government as much as it is the right of the workers to go out on strike. But, you know, these people don't I don't know whether they are oblivious to the inconvenience and adding to the hardship of the common man. For us, the issue here is, what are they striking for? They are not striking for a salary rise or wage hike or something like that. Yeah. This is a national issue. You know, they claim that it is on the grounds of uh, the port being given to Chinese company or something like that. Yeah. Now, I am being a member of the public to tell you honestly, yeah. I am not really aware of the cause of the strike. Right. You see, I mean, that itself shows that the public yeah. about, on, about whose right that they are fighting yeah. have not been made aware of what this is. So, this is, uh, this is 
I, I think they are on the wrong track. But they Mr. seem to be highly uh, politicized and this action seems to be politically driven. Yeah. Now we, you know, as a media organization, we have no party affiliations. Yes. We're there to report the news. Yes. yes. Uh, and, and to bring the public up to speed on what's happening, right? But obviously in our group, people would, uh, each person will have their uh, political views, but that's firmly left outside of the gates before they enter. When they're here, they, they are journalists and they're reporters and so on, right? No party affiliations, those are personal. Now, it appears to me that most of these actions are politically driven, politically <coughs> motivated, politically instigated. And there are mischievous elements, um, dark forces, call it whatever you may, but the fact is, all you have to do is look at any of the visuals from our news uh, over the last few days, and it's all absolute chaos and inconvenience to the public. Yes, and especially trade unions, when they precipitate action like this, see, they must bear in mind that if it is for a public cause that they are fighting for or they are protesting, the public should not be inconvenienced. There are various other steps that they could resort to yeah. without inconveniencing the public. For example, let me say, did they even go to the extent of summoning the other trade unions, the independent trade union movement in this country to seek their support for the cause? I mean, they, they create a public awareness by that, no? Mm -hmm. These are issues which concern the public right. Now, there is a parliament, there is an opposition, yeah. there is democracy in the country. Yeah. You know, there are certain ways that these things can be addressed. Mm. You know, precipitating action, yeah. strike action, is not the first thing to do. It's not the first thing to do. Indeed. In and, and, the, and the government information department has just uh, uh, sent out a, a note that uh, CPC staff who fail to report to work with immediate effect will be considered as having vacated their post. Good, strong action? Uh, this is quite normal. We have experienced this long, I mean, in our own yeah. actions. Yeah. You know, this is what a government would resort to. You know, of course it is left for the trade union people. But the, the government members. can't be held, uh, um, held to ransom by uh, opposing political forces who are trying to use uh, every possible way. They are almost clutching at straws now, uh, purely because um, they, want, um, they want to secure political power. And much of this political power, if I may say so, Mr. Tripal, and put it to you like this, that much of this political power that all politicians seek, or certainly in Sri Lanka, it appears that way, is that they are seeking uh, a financial gain or some sort of, it is financially, there is the ambience of finance always. Uh, and, and I'm putting it mildly, but what I'm trying to tell you is that these people came in on, on a promise of good governance. That was the ticket they used. Uh, the people were already activating for that anyway. And they, they, they used this, this finance element to secure power. And now that, now that they've arrived here in power, in the seats of power, do you, I mean, you're wearing glasses as well, so do I. Can you see any change? Do you feel any change? I mean, this is a broad issue uh, for us. We have to, I don't agree that there is uh, any good that these people have done because they are, it appears in most of the uh, instances that they are continuing what uh, they should not have done. And But here, the, in this particular instance, I want to add one thing. You know, creating disorder in the country yeah. is not a good way of coming to power. That's not done, you know. Yes. There, it, in a democratic country, there are ways and means of, you know, coming to power, create a public opinion, you express your, you propagate your views, and you come to power. But creating disorder causes a lot of harm to the public. You know, uh, I was going to say this to you. Um, 
the uh, probably get in trouble, but uh, uh, the JVP uh, and this uh, and the Peratugan people, they remind me of these little cartoons when you get a little rat who's scurrying around, you know, the vermin, they're scurrying around <coughs> looking for little scraps of this, that and the other. Yeah. And then they take that and you know, they make a huge song and dance. Yeah. And, and so unfortunately, as much as they should be uh, playing an opposition role, they're not. They, they are quietly in the background, all part of this, uh, of this ambience of creating trouble. I don't think they are in the background. They're very they're, much in the foreground, are they? Are, they are trying to ride the crest of a wave. Right. And they are trying to create force and, you know, make it, uh, enlarge it. This is not the first time for us. We saw the conversion of the EPF into a pension scheme, how it ended during the last regime. Mm. And with the sacrifice of a life, of a, of a youth person. Yes, at the, B, uh, at the BOI facility Ex in Katanaik. Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. So these are, these are bad instances in the history that should never be repeated in this country. And I am I'm feeling sorry, you know, those advisors of the president, trade union advisors and so on, I mean, they have a role to play in this. Shouldn't they be advising him and shouldn't you be advising the president and should you not be advising the president uh, Mr. Palisir is saying uh, that enough is enough of this unity government and that he should take the government under him. No, I, I always wish to say that because the president should be correctly guided, but he has appointed people for that purpose. But they're not delivering. They are, I don't see them anywhere. They're not in the scene. But they're not delivering. Uh, not, so, that, so not that they're not delivering. They're not to be seen in the scene. Right. <laughs> now then, uh, the other news and equally important and we mustn't let one uh, one news overshadow the other yes uh, but unfortunately that's how news is but we must keep this in mind the whole country appears to be talking about the housing of a senior cabinet minister now all the papers are full of it Ravi Karnanayaka former minister of finance now minister of foreign affairs Mr. Rispala, what is wrong if Mr. Karunaka's, uh, let's say, uh, companies associated with his family have purchased an apartment? What's wrong with that? And two, what's wrong with a friend of his, if he's a friend, uh, in this case a company connected to Arjun Alotius and his father Jeffrey, um, if they paid for the rent of their friend? But what, what's wrong? Tell me um, what's wrong. Absolutely, Faraz. There cannot be anything wrong in it, you know. If Ravi Karunalayaka can afford to buy a flat with at his with his money, oh, or with oh, the money that is given by a friend of his, yeah. you know, who is uh, who is capable of good giving, or a company that is connected to his family, uh, or a donation, or whatever. I mean, that is his business. But here, yeah. the situation is different. Okay. Now take this take this case. There is a murder. Yeah. And uh, they are looking for the weapon. And if somebody is hiding that weapon, he is responsible to some extent to that murder, no? Is it a payoff? Of course. I mean, it. you see, people Can look at... Can it be construed as a payoff? People look at it this way. You know, this is not an incident that has taken place yesterday. Mm. Now, we are watching this, this channel, you, me and everybody, all other people, social bodies, everybody. Yeah. They have been in it and they were following this very carefully. Mm. Please go back to the history. Mm. Now, Mr. Ravi Karunanayaka as the Minister of Finance, yeah. who had nothing to do with the central bank. Yeah. By virtue of the fact that it was taken out divested from, his, from him. Divested from him. Yeah. He played the most vociferous role inside parliament, outside parliament, although he had no direct responsibility falling on him. How are you saying that? On what basis are you saying I mean, you go back to the news earlier. Yeah. He went to the extent of challenging and ridiculing the attorney general, the, the auditor general of this country. He, yeah. had, a, he had a big uh, problem with him. Yeah. There was an open sort of engagement with him. Yes, he's and it on our channel as well. Yeah, and those are, I, I have the papers with me, the newspapers that reported. Yeah. Now, the, at a, the Auditor General had to come before the media and explain 
his role. And what so, about that that letter that's emerged now in, yeah. in the Presidential Commission? That I'm, sort of I'm coming, to, coming that, to that. I'm coming to that letter. I'm so keen. You know, no, I mean before that. You know, he created the rumpus about the gasset that was being issued by Mahindra Rajapaksa. Oh, yes. What amount of commotion? And all this happened yeah. after the commission started its sittings. You see, now it was, those are attempts we see as confusions, you know, hmm. to a norm. Now, from the, from the part of the government, yeah. the, the, the roles of a finance minister should have been quite different, no? It should have been a very proactive role. Are you are you suggesting that uh, Ravi Karunaka, as the Minister of Finance, yes. should have been almost whiter than white and kept his personal relationships and business dealings completely at arm's length? Yeah. No, you you remember Faraz? He 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 went to the extent of casting vituperative comments and remarks on the central bank officers who were giving evidence in the commission. Hmm. Now, what the want, now I just to just to recall this, you know, the a paper reported yeah. say vituperative comments made by the finance minister against central bank officers. Do you think the Auditor General is having the last laugh? <laughs> definitely, definitely. Because I mean But he's a real wonderful upstanding man, isn't he? Auditor he, General. He is too dumb. He is stood up to his position. He's got a very strong um, spine. A very strong willed man. And he delivered the, the expected duty bound results of his position to this country. Do you think that, do you think the president should sack Ravi Karunayaka? I think, uh, I think the right thing to do is. Don't be diplomatic. Mr. Mr. Ravi Karunayaka should resign and go. If he doesn't, should he be sacked? Well, it's a matter for the president. I mean, uh, there is... Uh, As citizen Sri Lanka, Mr. Rusri Palat, yeah, Tenakon, yeah. would you yes. would you advise the president? What is your feeling as citizen Sri Lanka, yeah. of Sri Lanka, yeah. citizen Rusri Palat? Yes. What would you like your president to do? I like the president to do something, safeguarding his position, safeguarding the continuity of the government, without allowing it to go into the hands of, you know, the renegades. Once again, he must play a safe game. So at the same start, time, ensure ensure the right thing at the right time. He, should did, he, this, he did this for us in appointing the commission uh, of this... Mr. Uh, Rispal, I'm going to ask you again. Yes. In Britain, Jonathan Aitken was a blue-eyed boy of... Margaret Thatcher, yes. destined to become the leader of the Conservative Party and perhaps the Prime Minister of Great Britain yes. and Northern Ireland. Yes. Okay. He was caught lying when he claimed that his wife paid the bill at the George V Hotel in Paris. Some public spirited person working for British Airways at the time yes. remembered after the case, uh, after he sort of won uh, the libel case against newspaper, the, she remembered that she had done a booking and she came out and spoke out and she, it was proven that Mrs. Aitken was actually arriving in Geneva with her daughter on another flight and she couldn't possibly have been in Paris. Mr. Aitken was, was sacked, he'd resigned by then by the way, he was taken to court, prosecuted for pervert in the course of justice, he was virtually bankrupt. He went to jail. Is that what should happen to Ravi Karunayaka? Should he be sacked? Should he be prosecuted for, if, if there is prima facie evidence, should there not be legal action against him? There is no question about it. That is what should happen. If not for the tightrope walking that the president has today, the situation that Britain had at that time, yeah. For them to take that action is entirely different to what is happening in Sri Lanka. Is he having the power to play a role by himself? We have to bear in mind these things. We can be emotional, we can say, okay, president should do this, president should sack this. I think he's refraining from doing certain things that he should do, marking time. He has to do it for the better interest of the country. We, we, on our program, we asked for 
the removal, we said that Arjuna Mahendran must go. Yeah. Is it time for us to say Ravi Karunanayake must go? I think there is no no reservation about it. Arjuna Mahendran should have gone long before, and the people made a hue and cry about Ravi it. Ravi Karunanayake. Same, same. If he has a wee bit of self-respect, there, there were many previous occasions on which he should have resigned and gone. But now, today? Now it is worse. Now it is worse. Because the evidence that is given under oath, under cross-examination, by the people who are concerned, not third parties, come and say, well, this is how this was negotiated, this is how it was given, this is the purpose for which it was given. But what about the role of Malik Samari Vikrama? Chairman of the United National Party, what on earth was he doing uh, at a meeting discussing state finances? What was his role? He had no role. What was his role? What do you think? Faraz, you will remember I started by saying from the very beginning the role played by Ravi Karunalayaka in this state, in this uh, bond issue has been questionable. Now, what you mentioned just now, the meeting that they had on the 26th of February 2015, in the central bank, yeah. you see, if you go back to the history, who attended that meeting? The UNP president. Yes, the chairman of the party. The chairman of the party. Yeah. The chairman of the party, Malik Samaravikram. Yeah. The general secretary of the UNP, Kabir Hashim, who was then the minister of highways. But he had, he is a state minister, he had a role in that. No, he had a role, but we can look at it in different ways. I, I, One I, I, way of yes. looking at it is, it is not a ministerial or official meeting. If it was, there is no place for Malik Samaravikrama to be there. Well, he was, he, he was there and he, he, you know, we have it on record and his confirmation that he was there. Yes. Now then, you know, just because you're yeah. a friend of the Prime Minister yes. uh, uh, doesn't mean yes. that you can attend state meetings. This is what I say. You have, look, you have to look at it that way. Is it a meeting of the friends or somebody who is representing someone or is it an official meeting? This is an official meeting. Official meeting held in an official premises to decide on an official matter. And he was there. These are, so, I mean, when, when he is there, the other participants are also looked up in the same way. We have extended several invitations to Mr. Samaravikrama to, to come on our program and uh, to have a uh, transparent discussion. Yes. Uh, but he's turned this all down, citing yes. that, well, he's turned me down, citing that he's been very busy. Uh, but is he the real culprit, do you think? What do you mean? In this bond matter, yeah, who was who do you think? No, I I don't know. He had a very important role to play, which he cannot deny, with his own commitments and with the role that he played subsequently. But this is a right royal club, the yes. prime minister's royal club. You can look at it that way as well. You can look at it that way as well because the prime minister. In his speech to the parliament on the 27th of March, and the 17th of March, yes. he admitted that there was this meeting. We, uh, we are unfortunately going to call it an end because we have some breaking news happening. Uh, Rusi Palatenekun, thank you very much for being on Newsline. Yes. And that's about it from Newsline on Wednesday, the 26th of July, 2017. Take care and God bless.